is Mabon. In this video, we discuss the pagan festival and share ways that you can celebrate. Stick around to the end for our power tip. Hello, I'm Max Raven. And I'm Cassandra Raven. Together we have over 30 years experience in the occult, witchcraft and magic. We share insight, knowledge, advice and lifestyle tips to make your magic go further and add potency to your work. So Mabon, or Mabon, or Maon, depending on where you're from, is named after the Welsh god of male fertility. It's a celebration that occurs on the autumn equinox around the 22nd to the 23rd of September. Many traditions all over the world have a celebration at this time, Mabon being one of the oldest harvest celebrations in Europe. It is a time of equal light and dark. These times were recognised by the English and Celts, but was brought over as a celebration by the Norse invaders. So Mabon is the second of three harvests. It's right in the middle between Lunasa and Samhain. And it's a time of being grateful. It's gratitude. It's Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is something that is celebrated in the US and in Canada roughly around the same time of year, although not at the same time as Mabon. But it's the same idea. It's being thankful, it's being grateful for the harvest. Around this time, you can gather your things like nuts, berries, apples, grapes, and you're using this bounty and getting out into nature to become closer to it. Mm. Some fantastic traditions at this time is making cider, apple and blackberry pies, which is a personal mm. favourite. Yeah, I, I love all that stuff. It's comfort food. And yes. in the Northern Hemisphere, we're moving into autumn, we're moving into winter, the nights are getting darker mm. earlier, um, and it's all about that feeling of bringing the outside into the home, so yes. celebrating by bringing nature into the home, by bringing in you know, the, the boughs, of, similar to Yule or Christmas, where you bring in the holly, you bring in you know, the boughs and the, and the yeah, greenery. Yeah, so you just might bring in things like, say, ivy, or there are various... Mm. Um, plants are uh, one that I certainly like to use for instead of uh, decorating, decorating? decorating our, uh, our altar is uh, briny because it's got these fantastic mm. beautiful berries and it grows in the hedgerows near the house yeah. so it, it's bringing yeah. in the elements of that autumn that change into your home. Mm. It's Mabon is really the beginning of Samhain or Halloween. Yes. It's the start of the Halloween season and this time, I mean, recently, I think in very modern times. Yeah. Really recently, in the past sort of you know, past five, five years, years or so, yeah. it seems to be that in our in our community, among the people that we know that 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 are aware of witchcraft or that are aware of paganism at least and the changing of the season, it's like the first of September. Bam! It's Halloween. Like we're celebrating Halloween straight away <laughs> from the 1st of September. And it's that kind of feeling, isn't it? And, is and it can go from being, right, we're on the beach, this is lovely. 1st of September is like, ah, oh, screw this, I'm getting into the Halloween costume. It's, it's Halloween, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, it's very much so now. Um, mm. And that's, that's the fantastic things about Mabon. It's this sort of in-between time where it's moving towards that yeah. that final marker point of the, the summer. Yeah, and... Warmth. When, when you're sort of saying goodbye to the summer as well and moving mm. into the winter season, um, when you look at it in terms of the deities, the deities are moving into their older phases. Um, you know, you've got the sort of what was the maiden in the spring, and then the mother in the summer is now becoming the crone, uh, moving yeah. into the winter months. The god is getting prepared for the uh, his uh, ritual sacrifice at uh, Samhain, uh, moving into the winter. Mm. So really, Mabon is it really is the beginning of that transition, the beginning of that sort of sort of the end of life the darkness. Elements, so yeah, say. yeah. Another aspect of Mabon is honouring the dead. Yes, which is very very similar. There are all sorts of uh, traditions which, if you saw it, you would go, "That's clearly Halloween." Yeah. Um, but uh, one thing I always like to do when we're celebrating, or we have any sort of um, one of the main festivals that we celebrate, is to uh, have the chair for the uninvited guest mm. and this is basically the second extra place at your table having an empty chair which for any ancestor spirits or any helpful energies is showing that they are welcome to come mm. and to interact yeah that's really nice and you're just leaving that space for them to be 
um, yeah. to be at the meal. Um, so how to celebrate Mabon? What can we do? What, what can we get involved with? I think a nice idea is to visit burial mounds um, and honour the dead. And if you don't have any of those in your area or if you don't have access to those, you can visit loved ones' graves or places that have a significant um, attachment to a loved one that's passed. And you can leave an offering. Um, perhaps some apples or some flowers or anything that's in season at the mm. time, things particularly that are being harvested as well. Um, the bonus of that, of course, is that any nature and wildlife that will benefit from that, um, you yes. know, it's, it's going to help nature out as it, well. It's also a, a connecting again with those spirits. One of the traditional ideas was you would go and uh, interact with them, uh, show that you're still have that uh, caring relationship with them, so that they're mm. well disposed to you when they are able to travel uh, across the the veil at uh, Halloween at Halloween so again preparation for Halloween yes almost almost a kind of well I know this is coming I, better go I know and make what's sure coming my, next my, my ex-wife in law is happy with me and I stuff better like make that. sure the ghosts are gonna come and say <laughs> hi on Halloween uh, you know we're we're on good terms yeah. we're friendly we're friendly yeah so so what else can you do at, at Mabon oh for Mabon for me um growing up it was always a time to go foraging for a uh -huh. variety of different things so mm. Uh, Mabon for me is the taste of blackberry and apple pies <laughs> or blackberry and apple crumbles depending on how badly mm. you made the pastry um, but that, that, that sort of the beginning of that is going out out the autumn with my brothers and sisters and you know, gathering as much as Harvesting, we can yeah. um, great time to gather mushrooms as well if you know how to do it safely mm. and never just go out and grab anything because a <laughs> lot of poisonous mushrooms look like the edible ones so only do it with someone that knows because otherwise you can get yourself in trouble. Mm. Uh, Did you have um, a family tradition based around when you have to stop gathering? Yes, yes, that's uh, one that comes from my, uh, I believe, from my grandmother. Like, well, I certainly remember it as my grandmother telling me this is that uh, you can only harvest up until the first frost. Anything after that, uh, you have to leave for the hay ho, for the energies or nature, depending on that's lovely. who she's telling this story to. Um, <laughs> But there's one strange one that I found that uh, if you're gathering rose hips, it's different to you. You want to wait. You either have to wait until after the first frost to get them at their, their best, or you put them in the freezer. So there's there's ways of cheating. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but, you can cheat by mild technology and yeah. having a freezer in the home. Um, so what kinds of things? If you were setting up an altar, really, you're looking at the beginning of the harvest. See the sort of you know <coughs> yes. the harvest season, but anything that's being harvested at the time and anything that's in flower and in fruit mm. at the time no matter what time of year you're doing it those are the things that you should include on your altar so keep it um you know linking in with whatever's going on in nature mm. at the time but uh, what, what are some good things to put on your altar or use in your incense or perhaps use within your magic at this time around this time i would certainly if uh, like we said earlier you're bringing in elements from nature outside so if you've got leaves that are in the process of changing mm. anything that brings that connection to this transitional stage. Um, herbs uh, that can be used magically at this time, mint is fantastic because it has that connection to the underworld but also quite a few other positive connotations. Mm. Storax, uh, very similar again, but a fantastic smell. And myrrh, really traditionally used in honouring the dead. So a mix of these three could be a really nice one to use around this time. Mm. I like to make a list of everything that I'm grateful for. I like to do that frequently, but I like to do that especially at this time of year, mm. knowing that we're going into a darker period, you know, that the, the days generally, we're in the UK, we're in England, so... It's we, cold all the time. It's cold all the time, it's raining all the time. <laughs> we don't really have um, a lot of daylight during the day in the winter. It starts mm. to get dark at three, four o'clock in the afternoon, and it's just so depressing <laughs> and I like to make a list of everything I'm grateful for and put it somewhere where I can see it all the time which is a really good idea I think because yeah. even if you're seeing it out the corner of your eye you're consciously you're subconsciously aware of those things on that list Definitely. so it's a really good thing to do is just make a big list of everything you're grateful for and stick it up somewhere maybe on your mirror or something and you, you know read it while you're brushing your teeth or whatever and it's a really good thing to keep on your mind through those darker months it keeps you going it keeps you feeling grateful during those months Definitely. and during those hard times. I mean, gratitude is essential in the uh, 
process of creation mm. whatever you are thankful for it will inc- increase that energy so if you're grateful for your pets or your mm. home or mm. if you're looking for a new job you might be very grateful for the one you have mm. because that's going to draw more energy to you and possibly give you like an opportunity mm. and being grateful to any oh, or any deities, deities of because it's not you know, you sometimes you might think of Thanksgiving as a Christian um, festival, um, but Thanksgiving you can be giving thanks to the universe. You can be giving thanks to any of your gods or goddesses. It doesn't matter as long as you're giving thanks. And you get a nice meal. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, another thing I like to do with the changes of the seasons is to have a really good clean around the home. Um, put away the summer stuff. Pack away the summer things. Um, you know, make space and start to bring out things like your cosy blankets stock up on your candles the wood for the fire um plan your crafting activities for the darker evenings um you know things that you might want to get done over the winter i like to have lots of projects on the go in the winter because it keeps me in the light it keeps me focused and it keeps me you know really determined to Mm. achieve my goals and keep going and keep going whether it's a creative project or whatever it is and also a good thing to do is to stock up on books so that you've got plenty to read going through the winter as well definitely this is a fantastic time to stock up on wisdom you'll see a lot of uh, animals at this time stockpiling nuts for the winter Mm. and bring those things so it's a time for the beginning of the time for introspection to Mm. work on yourself so it's very much like the crone going from her mother stage into the the wise old crone so Mm. you're trying to um, show elements of that within your self-development so it's a fantastic time if you need to work on yourself yeah you can do this and not worry about missing a day at the beach that's that yeah. right yeah, yeah that's it you're not distracted by the fact that it's sunny outside and you just want to get outside yeah it's, it's raining a, and it's horrible and you're getting that's, a, it's that's a good power tip actually is yeah. to focus on yourself through the winter Definitely. um but yeah I, I think that's i think that's a really really good thing to do and i i find a really deep connection spiritually during the winter mm-hmm. in the summer as well but in the summer it, it feels lighter it's it's you know it's not as heavy it's just there's a different mm. there's definitely a different spiritual feeling yeah. going through the different seasons and mabon when we start to look towards halloween we start to look yeah. towards Samhain, you become you start to feel that real connection and they say that at halloween the veil is at its thinnest yeah so you know we're starting to move towards that um so it, it's a good it's a good kind of power tip to say focus on yourself it go is. through your own development go through your own processes um, yes, it's a great time to do that. It's a great the time to wear your witch's hat and not get <laughs> weird looks as well. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. Um, feel free to visit our online store, raventhemysticshop.com, where we sell herbs, roots, resins, handmade spell kits, um, hand blended incense, t shirts, and lots of other goodies. So come along and have a look at ravenmysticshop.com. We are also on Etsy. We have an Etsy shop. So find us Raven Mystic on there. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and thank you so much for watching. Leave a comment if you've got any uh, traditions that you might have during Nabon or anything like that. Let us know. It'd be great to hear from you. Thank you so much. Goodbye.